Hello, my name is Matt Max. Welcome back to All Little Mechanics with Cobble Space Program. In the last couple episodes, we talked about the basics of orbits, properties of orbits, and so on and so forth. Today, I will actually start to talk about the bread and butter of orbital mechanics, which are orbital maneuvers. Because getting into orbit is fine, but every space mission ever requires you to get a specific orbit or to do some things with your orbit. For example, GPS satellites are in a geosynchronous orbit, so that when the Earth turns, the satellite turns just as much, so they are always at the same point above the surface. Or uh, spy satellites are in a polar orbit, right? If you want to get to the moon, you have to somehow change your orbit so that you get there, and so on and so forth. How do you actually do that? With orbital maneuvers. So, the most basic thing you can do to your orbit is to change your altitude, to make your orbit bigger or smaller. Let's actually jump into the game and let's see what this really means. So right here we have a circular orbit, a roughly circular orbit, and it's about at 100 kilometers. And let's say we want to get to um, maybe to 1000 kilometers, so that's about here, or maybe to 2000, or maybe even to 11,400, which is where the moon is at. How do we actually do that? Your first impulse might be to just accelerate into the direction you want to go in. So we are here right now, and we want to be here, right? So obviously, we just accelerate in this direction until we are here, and then we go back into orbit, right? No, that is not how it works. The first thing, the most important thing you need to understand is that you cannot just go from A to B in orbit. Flying in an orbit is completely different and completely counterintuitive to anything you know. It's not like driving a car. Let's say you drive a car in a parking lot and you go in a circle, right? And you say, I want to go in a bigger circle. What do you do? You go left and then you go right again. So it looks, it looks like this, right? You drive in this red circle and then you are like, I want to drive in the green circle instead. So you go left, then you go in a straight line and then you go right instead until you're driving the bigger circle. Orbits don't work like this. Orbits don't work like this. Let's see what happens if we do this. So, let's see what happens when we just accelerate in the direction we want to go at. So, we actually don't have to do this, we can simulate it. So, those are the six directions I can actually fly in. I can accelerate, I can decelerate, so I can get go faster or slower, I can go uh, right or left, up or down. So, we want to be about here. So let's see what happens if you fly in that direction. Well, that's not really what we wanted to do, is it? Because now suddenly we are escaping Kerbin when we are now in an orbit around the sun. So that's not really what we wanted to do after all. What is it? The reason it won't work this way is that you cannot just go in a straight line when you are in an orbit. You cannot. If I want to change my position from here to here, I just go over there, right, in a straight line. When we travel with car, with ship, with airplane, whatever, we're going in a straight line. Well, actually, we're, we're going in a curve because the Earth is an ellipsoid, but we are perceiving it as a straight line, right? And so for us, intuitively, it makes sense to go in a straight line, but that doesn't work in orbits because when you do anything in an orbit, what you actually do is you change the orbit. If you point in a direction and accelerate, you're not going in this direction, you're changing the orbit instead. So if we want to change our orbit so that, we, that the orbit is at 1000 kilometers instead of 100, we have to change the orbit itself, right? We cannot just point in this direction. It's completely counterintuitive to anything we're used to. Another example, let's say this is the ISS, okay, and let's say this is a resupply vessel, and they are in the same orbit, but 10 kilometers apart. What do you do? Your first impulse might be, I accelerate, because, you know, I want to get closer, so what do I do? I accelerate. But if you accelerate, what actually happens is that your orbit gets bigger, and then you're actually falling behind. Because like the racer, like the runner on the racetrack that is in the outer lane, you have to run a longer a longer way when you are at the outer lane. You are now at the outer lane, so the ISS is faster and just falls away. 
you accelerate towards the ISS, but you're falling away. The distance gets bigger, not smaller. You accelerate it and the distance gets bigger. Because you didn't really accelerate towards the ISS, you changed your orbit to a higher orbit. If you want to get to the ISS, you have to slow down. Then you fall into a lower orbit, and now you are the runner in the inner lane, and now you will catch up, and then you can accelerate again to go upwards. If you want to understand orbits, you have to start to think with portal. You have to start to think with orbits, okay? You have to forget about the notion that we just accelerate in the direction we want to go in. You have to forget about the notion to go of going in a straight line that doesn't work. Orbital mechanics don't work this way, okay? Instead, you have to think about how can I influence my orbit so that I achieve what I want to do. What we have to do is we have to actually get the apoapsis of our orbit to 1,000 kilometers first, okay? To do this, you place a maneuver at the opposite side of the part of the orbit you want at 1,000 kilometers. That's rule of thumb number one of orbital maneuvers. When you do something, it always affects the opposite side of the orbit. If I do something here, it will affect this side. Let me demonstrate. So if I accelerate, I can go up to 1,000 kilometers. 1,009 kilometers. Uh, if I now move this, you will see, provided that I'm actually able to mark it, you will see that it always changes the opposite side. And now it disappeared. But it always changes the opposite side. That's a really important rule in orbital mechanics. So again, let's get this up to 1,000 kilometers. Oh, okay, close enough. So this orange orbit is what is called a Hohmann transfer orbit. It's an elliptical orbit with an apoapsis of 1,000 kilometers, which is the altitude we want. Now, all we need to do when we are in this second orbit, in this orange one, is to make it circular again. To do this, we add another maneuver, and we accelerate again, and again, it changes the opposite side. So we accelerate until this is at 1,000 kilometers as well. Actually, I have to put it right here. And so this is not perfect, but you get the idea, right? If you look at this, we now have a circular orbit, this one, that has an altitude of 1,000 kilometers. And we did it by changing our orbit into a temporary transfer orbit called a Hohmann transfer orbit. And then we made this Hohmann transfer orbit, which was like this, right? circular again by burning a second time. If you want to change from one circular orbit to another, you always have to burn twice. Always. There is no way to get from one circular orbit to another if you only burn once. And the reason for that is that you always change the, other, the opposite side of your orbit when you do something. So by burning once, you can only turn a circle into an ellipse. Or an ellipse into a circle. But you cannot turn one circle into another circle. For that, you need to burn twice. Okay? So rule of thumb number one, you always change the opposite side of the orbit. And rule of thumb number two, to get from one circular orbit to another circular orbit, you need to burn twice. My name is BitMapMax. Thanks for watching this episode. I hope you learned something new about orbital mechanics. And tune in next time.